Okay, so tell us a little bit about your childhood. Now, when I was very young, uh, I never fitted in. I always hear stories of um, me being rebellious even as a baby, like hiding the keys and squatting beyond the settee to go to the toilet and just being rebellious. And uh, so when I was growing up, like the import, we didn't know, obviously my family weren't Christians then, we didn't know the importance of words and, and the power of them. So we, uh, when I was young and a toddler, I would just like hear the story of how I was meant to be a boy and how my parents were devastated that I was a girl and that my name was going to be Greg and that there, I was the baby with no name for a long time. They didn't know what to name me. So like looking back, as a child hearing all this. So it was a very unsettled, like, you know, home. Um, uh, we were living like, it looked good. It all looked good, had the house, the car, mum and dad together, everything. But there was always something in me that wasn't settled. You didn't feel maybe accepted? No, you? never, never accepted. And I never felt part of anything never felt part of my family um, yeah and I used to dream a lot as a child like I, I believe that that was even back then you know because I didn't know him but he knows us so I always used to go into dreams read like adventures and famous five and just go off into dreamland so I took myself a lair a lot of times into games and like wildlife and my family were a loving family and they did the best they could with what they knew but the acceptance was was not there uh, I developed a, a habit because I used to hear a lot of things about um, you know the words that you know you're a little devil and you know when your mum you were in your mum's tummy you used to have we could see the horns sticking out. So I became a very, my sister was completely the opposite. So she was older than me. So it was almost like I grew up in her shadow. So it affected me in the way of, I was never gonna be as good as her. But what I was good at is being bad. Yes, I so you actually, became what they said I, you were. Yeah, I became all of that. And I was never going to reach the level of excellence that I, you know, was aspired to. And it, it went on from, like, then in school, why can't you be like your sister? Teachers saying it, you know, you never amount to nothing, all things like that. And then I got into wrong relationships. But I always had the heart for people because, you know, we always were a good family and had a heart for, for people. So I always thought I could change people. Ah, so, so that, what, with that kind of attitude, not being accepted and feeling you can change yeah. people, what were the pitfalls that you can see now? Yeah, because really, we can't change anyone. Yeah, we can't change anyone. And um, yeah, and obviously the issues I had, I ended up becoming you know, what I wanted to change, I ended up becoming that. So I got into drugs heavily, got into shoplifting, got, I, I just left home. I put myself in situations where nobody really cared. They didn't know how to care. And how were you feeling? Were you feeling like you didn't want to, but you were doing it to prove a point? Or what was your mindset? My when mind, you were doing I was, all those things? I felt bad about doing it. I always had a conscience. And I always knew I didn't belong. But the thing was, is I felt I never belonged at home either. So there was always a, a, something going on. So I, I knew I didn't belong around this and doing this, but actually I didn't belong at home either. Yes. So I never felt I belonged in any of it. Okay. So it was always like in, in limbo. So in that lifestyle now, you've left home. Um, yeah. 
you said were you were you with someone or you were just on your yeah, own? Well, yeah, well I had a partner. You we, had a partner. Yeah, okay. and then I ended up. Um, that was it. The answer. I, I wasn't. I wasn't happy. I, I couldn't find happiness. So my goal was to find happiness in a baby. Oh. So I wanted to have this baby and the baby was going to be the answer, it was going to love me, it was going to, I'd have something to love, it would give back to me what I needed, I would be able to give what I needed to give and that baby would receive it. So I ended up just falling pregnant and obviously the state of my life, I was obviously taking drugs and you know. And what, it, how old were you at that time? Fifteen is the first time I fell pregnant. I oh, fell pregnant are. for um, at the first time of fifteen, uh, maybe just sixteen. So, yeah, I was. I was. Searching. Did it change your lives? Did you get happier? Or no, I, I then losing a baby. Then you just it's like a it's a downward slope. So I had miscarriage after miscarriage, and then like the hope. And I never really dealt with, with the healing of that. Um, there was a little uh, something. I, I had six miscarriages. I actually lost six babies. Wow. And um, then I got to a level in a pregnancy that I'd not reached before. And I thought this was it, you know. And my relationship with um, the, the father at the time, he'd gone off. He was, um, I was hearing different things that he, so I'd actually gone back home. I'd gone back home with my parents then, but um, anyway, I ended up uh, delivering this baby early. And the we, premature child, yeah, yeah, the premature Lewis, the baby, I ended up delivering him and he came early. And we were all due, the whole family were due to go on holiday together. And it was like we were we were just going to go off to our holiday that we go on all the time, and I was actually going to go with them. But uh, he had been born early. He was, I think, ten days old at this this point, and it was for my mum's birthday. So I just said, "I'll be okay. You go off on holiday." And while they were all away. Um, the dreaded thing happened and he, my son died whilst um, wow. we were all on holiday. So, yeah. I think I was 18, nearly 19, and my son had died in my arms, in our arms, and he was two pounds seven. Oh. And my world then became just the darkest of dark. Like it was dark, but this was darker. And then, I really started to look for answers because I didn't, I couldn't hold on. I just literally felt as though many times, like thoughts of suicide, take it, didn't want to be here, couldn't cope. Where was the turning point for you? I think the turning point was when my mum and dad started going to church. They were so worried about me. Like, I, they knew about the drugs, they knew about who I was around. They had to come up to the hospital to get me a few times. I had a car accident, which only God <laughs> saved my life from in that. And they were beside themselves. And my whole world was uh, just torn apart. And the darkness got darker. And I never saw any hope. I'd made a mess of it myself. And I cried out to God. And I cried out to God. <laughs> and. I said basically, uh, if you save me, I will do my best and live right for you. Uh, obviously, my parents were going to church, they started praying for me, so things had broken off then. And um, I just started to call out, and I one day went to the church building, and I cut like it even makes me well up now. Even just walking into that, it was. Um, community church in town where they were going I walked into that building and I felt something that I had never felt in my life it was acceptance it was love so I cried <laughs> and I cried and I cried because and I knew like some people have to read they have to study they have to see that side of it but I knew 
something had hit me inside and I knew that there was a God. So my journey began there. My journey began then.